meeting. This is a regular meeting of the Cameron County Commissioner's Court. It is Thursday, October the 15th, 2009. It is now approximately 5 p.m. Uh, as we do all meetings, we will start with invocation. That will be led by uh, Thomas Caruba of Hosanna Assembly. Then I'd like to ask all the veterans that are here uh, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the U.S. flag and the Texas flag. Please rise. Thomas. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for today and this time that we have that, Lord, that your leaders can gather together to do the business of your county. And God, we pray for your blessing. We pray for, pray for your counsel, your wisdom, and your knowledge. And we pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Public comments. First public comment by Mr. Victor Alvarez. Which, which item is it? Okay. All right. Second uh, is Mary Helen Flores. Thank you. I'm here on behalf of property owners who care of South Padre Island to uh, read aloud a resolution that they have submitted to you. Uh, whereas the board and members of property owners who care South Padre Island support the efforts of Friends of Isablanca Park and other like-minded citizens groups to prevent Cameron County from leasing for private development any of the beach properties in Andy Bowie and or Isla Blanca Parks and to continue to maintain these beaches for the use of the public. Further, property owners who care in conjunction with Friends of Isla Blanca specifically protest the lease of public beach properties by Cameron County to the Laguna Madre Enhancement Group. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Does anyone else need to make public comment that did not or did not have the opportunity to sign, sign up? Okay. Item 2A, presentations and resolutions. Item A, presentation by Texas Association of Counties Leadership Foundation on the Street Light Project Award. Judge, thank you for allowing me to be here today. If uh, we could just run the video first and we could watch that, that would be Let's great. Go. That'll be fine. Thank you. Texas Association of Counties Leadership Foundation presents the 2009 Best Practices Awards for Innovation in County Government. Innovation awards are given to programs that increase productivity, customer service, or cost savings for the county. Welcome to the Laguna Vista neighborhood in Cameron County, where for years residents were living in the dark. Well, I've been here almost um, 10 years. Oh, no, I wasn't saved. There were a lot of problems with my cars. Other areas suffered from darkness as well. This area consists of approximately 6,000 taxpayers in, in the area of Cameron Park. This area is outside the city limits. It's part of Cameron County, and any service that, that's needed in this area is supplied by uh, the county. If you had been out, out here a year ago, this was pitch black. When you have a, a dark neighborhood, really that attracts the bad element. County officials were determined to get residents the light they needed. Cameron County did receive a grant for security lights, but the problem was that there was nobody to collect 
the street light uh, bill for each of the uh, taxpayers. We came up with a software program to, uh, to include the fee in each of the tax bills that were mailed out in October. There was, this was unique. We called several counties throughout the state of Texas. Nobody had done this. Now, residents are thankful to the county for providing a safer neighborhood. And back then, it was just like, all dark. You, when you would drive down the road, it was just like, dark, a dark street. If you're more secure, like, you have light now. So it's better than just like, back then, just staying inside. Judge Commissioners, thank you for allowing me to come today and present this award. It's a great day to be an Aggie in Cameron County. Now, I just had to say that. We're four and oh. I just had to say that, Judge, because I know others are represented here today, such as yourself, so I wanted to make sure you knew that there's an Aggie in the house, too. And we're not four and oh. Um, the Texas Association of Counties has a Best Practices Awards. It's a very prestigious award in that there's only a limited amount of awards it's giving out annually. This year, 13 counties were recognized. Cameron County was actually recognized twice. Tonight, we are here to recognize you for a very innovative approach that, to be honest with you, to me, that is enhancing the quality of life of your residents of your county. It is important that we remember that county government is the closest government to the people. You know, the old saying is, if you call 911, who do you get? Judge, if people don't like what's going on in your county, they either see you at church, they see you at your local office, they'll see you commissioners at uh, Safeway or Apple Tree or HEB or some location, but I promise you their voice will be heard that's not always the case when it's at the state or federal level, as you all well know. But this is a different issue that is before you today, and you being recognized is a tremendous and outstanding performance for others to follow in the state of Texas, not just in the state of Texas, but also across our, our great nation. Today, we have uh, two people that have joined uh, me, and they're not up here right now, but hopefully they'll join me up here in a minute. Uh, and I want to read a statement. It was the last paragraph, it was the last statement that was in the magazine that was created for the Best Practices Awards, and I quote, this particular program was a team effort. It's not just the tax collector's office, but also the planning department, the commissioner's court, the county judge, our compliance officer. I'm glad we were a part of it. And that is signed by your tax assessor collector, Tony Izaguerri. Today, the Chief Deputy, Jesse Garcia, is with us. Also, uh, Rick Camarillo is here to answer <coughs> any questions. But Judge, it's an honor for me. As I have traveled throughout the state of Texas as immediate past president of the Texas Association of Counties and currently sit on the board of the National Association of Counties, your county is unique. Y'all should be very proud. Not only when you walk in such a majestic building, Judge, this is not commonality throughout the state of Texas. A lot of times we're meeting in commissioners' courts, meeting in small rooms as best they can, and y'all just have such a, a, a tremendous reflection upon the general public in providing such a great building. There are many things here in Cameron County that I, I admire, and I always look forward to coming back. And Judge, if you will join me up here, I would like to present you the, um, the plaque. Judge 2009 County Best Practices Innovation Award is conveyed to Cameron County Streetlight Project for outstanding innovation and community per improvement for county government facilities, processes, and programs. Issued by the Texas Association of Counties Leadership Foundation. Congratulations, Judge. Thank you very Judge. much. Thank you.
Judge, Commissioners, uh, in behalf of Mr. Seguirre, the County Tax Assessor Collector for Cameron County, we thank you all. We thank the association. Mr. Seguirre couldn't be here tonight. He had a previous engagement, but uh, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, Jesse. Rick, can you say anything? Rick, 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 you want to say anything? I think you should since you're up here. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say it was, uh, uh, we're glad our office can, could take part of it and uh, help out uh, Cameron County. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. And having said that, um, the, uh, I think before we get to Mr. Alvarez, you know, this, I think Tony said it best when he said that this was, this was a, a team effort. We couldn't have done it without the tax assessor's office because really no, nobody wanted to come to the table and, and find the mechanism to, to bill the residents. Uh, secondly, we couldn't do it without the support of the commissioner's court you know, for, for approving the project. And, and thirdly, the, the, uh, the commissioner who's not here, who, who spearheaded the, the initiation of these lights in Laguna Heights, and then it, they went over to, to Cameron Park. And they were done almost simultaneously, but it's a great deal. And we hope that for those that, that are watching, that we, we, uh, we strive to, to continue to make these types of improvements throughout our rural communities, because we don't have that. Counties don't have, at least Cameron doesn't have that mechanism, like we don't have a PUB or Magic Valley or, you know, like, and like other communities do. Uh, so this is, a, this is a good project. We hope it's the, the first of, of many. Uh, and it was long, long time in coming. But I want to thank Tony's office because uh, uh, without his help and him coming forward and doing it within a budget that, was, that we could afford and the residents that are paying for these lights can afford, uh, this, this could not have happened. Uh, we're going to get another award, and I don't want to break it and on the 29th, which is something that, that we initiated as well. The first in the state of Texas is, uh, is outreach to, to the folks that are hearing impaired. Uh, principally during disasters and hurricanes, and we we got an award for that too, um, through uh, you know through the TAC for the initiatives that that we've done over the last two years to reach out to those folks that uh, that cannot hear. Uh, as a matter of fact, the first people that heard of what we were doing with Hurricane Dean were some folks over at the university at UTB that that were that were hard of hearing, and. Um, I was there giving them the news about 12 hours before Dean almost made landfall. Uh, and they were very appreciative. And these are people that, that believe they've been left out. Uh, so we, we were able to convince the, the news media to uh, give us a, a part of their, of their screen during hurricanes, principally, and, and have somebody there on time, real time, and, and convey the messages as, as we're speaking uh, via press conference or news, they're going to be there uh, with, with the language that, that they understand, which is the, uh, the American Sign Language. So um, I want to thank TAC for, for the recognition. Uh, and Cameron County is a special place. And many times we, we do hear of, of all the negatives that, that occur, not only in Cameron, but throughout. But every once in a while, there, there are some bright lights, and not, no pun intended, but, but there are some bright lights, and there are some good things that happen. And, and those are, those are the, the, uh, the types of things that we need to be focusing on. So I want to thank you all once again. And with that, let me open it up to Victor. I'd like to make a oh, couple of comments go. before Pastor Alvarez does. He's going to steal oh. your thunder now. <laughs> no, I'm going to steal your thunder, I, I hope. Uh, I, uh, I do appreciate tax recognition and selection of this project. Uh, because it is significant to our communities. Um, it's uh, also good that our tax assessor collector was willing to do and go the extra mile to make arrangements to be able to bill for this because without billing the people who get the benefit of it, it just really would not have worked. But also there's some other folks that need to be recognized in this, and, and one of them is uh, Representative Veronica Gonzalez who put forth the legislation in Austin to be able to allow this to be done. Her, along with the Valley representatives and senators and the others in the state that passed this a few years back, made it all possible to start with, but then it took the team, as Tony says, to get it all put together. Some of that team, um, as an example, Representative Rene Oliveira worked with AEP in order to get a grant to put the infrastructure in because we didn't have the money to do that and we appreciate his work and AEP's contribution to it. That wouldn't have happened if a fellow named uh, Brother Albert Phillip, who was at uh, San Felipe de Jesus Church in Cameron Park, 
had not spent a couple years working with the community there to get easements to be able to do the drop lines and to be able to put the, the poles in and, and connect the wires up. So, you know, the team goes on and on. And I know you mentioned our planning department, uh, Frank Bejarano and, and Raul and those folks who worked alongside uh, Brother Albert and the rest of the folks in Cameron Park that worked toward getting this thing done, including Pastor Alvarez and, and a lot of us who worked. And I know that uh, uh, Laguna, Height, Laguna Heights was a, a project that, that went online, as the judge said, about the same time as Cameron Park did. And it's, it's meant a lot to the people who live in those areas. We still have a long way to go in Cameron Park because about half of it is not serviced by AEP. So we don't have the capital investment of about $47,000 to put in the poles to provide lighting for the balance of Cameron Park. But we are working on that, and we're working to try to get that money put together so that Tony can then bill those people for their lighting also. So we're, we're very appreciative of it. And this also spurred another um, small subdivision off of 803, just up the road before you get to Highway 100, that uh, had their infrastructure in place, but for several different reasons, the lights had been turned off for a couple of years. And I, I want to mention that uh, Almito Water Supply was kind enough to take into consideration their board members, take into consideration the billing of those customers for their lights. So now their kids can meet the school buses before it gets daylight and have lights to do it and be dropped off where there's lights, and it's much safer in that community too. It's a very important project, not only in Cameron County, but I think throughout Texas, more emphasis needs to be put on trying to provide lighting for everyone. So thank you for being here. I'm sorry, Pastor, if I took some of your- Good thing that I am a pastor. I had to rewrite my sermon because you all <laughs> took the win out of it. <laughs> you then mentioned everybody I was gonna mention, so I'll just change the subject a little bit. I came to thank you. And uh, I also came to let you know that uh, I want to thank everybody had a part, every, everybody that you mentioned. And this is what real unity and teamwork produces. Uh, and, and we at Cameron Park are thankful. Uh, there's an organization in Cameron Park called UPCP. And through that nonprofit organization, we're looking to raise some money for that 47,000 that's needed and look into any other organization that wants to team up with it to put that money together so we can finish the project in Cameron Park. Since I'm here, let me address the problem that the county faces. Uh, I also served four years on CDCB. And uh, right behind us is two beautiful uh, neighborhoods, Meadowbrook, and they have no street lighting. And that's a curve and gutter neighborhood, but because the county has no regulation to regulate street lighting, people go and build uh, in the county and, and build beautiful homes, and then these people have a problem that the counties uh, cannot facilitate street lighting for safety, and I think we need to be looking that any developer that develops in the county, he needs to uh, put the infrastructure of street lighting in those developments because uh, one reason to develop that far out there is because of uh, economic reasons of what land is worth, but, but the people that are buying into the homes, they don't, they don't know that. That is one of the issues. The other issues that we need to look at now, that the county needs to be looking, we need more unity within our school system and our city and our county communication because uh, I just heard there's a new school going up next to uh, Gallegos. When that school comes in there, Dana Road, which is County Road, it, it already has too much traffic. And, and uh, I don't know how the school district manages, you know, uh, how they're gonna build that school there, but we need to be ahead of this game before we have a problem how the school's built. And now the county has a problem with the road. There's a two lane road. So I just wanted to thank you all for the effort, I, I know I can count to three, and it took three votes on this commission to get it passed. I want to thank all of you that voted for it, and thank all the people that you already mentioned that had a great part, and I, I, I really, uh, i tell you the man that kept me, kept me in on the loop was Brother Albert. I have never known a man with more tenacity, with a project that was going nowhere, that was dead in the water, and then when the recognition came to come and accept the money back then, I still remember he calls me up and he says, Come here. So I came, I sat down, he said, go up there and accept the... So uh, uh, a great man, Brother Albert, and everybody that had a part, thank you, uh, commissioners, thank you, judge, and everybody else that was mentioned already, and I'll take no more time. Thank you very much. Thank you. But it, it, this, this vote on this one, I don't, I don't recall it being other than a unanimous vote. 
on every issue that came up regarding the lighting project and you know assigning it to Tony and everything. So, but thank you for your for your comments. Judge, I would like to thank TAC for uh, having these awards. I know that you <coughs> recognize uh, counties all over the state. I've, I've been there, so I've seen you recognize uh, across the state, and it gives us an opportunity uh, to really send kudos to our employees, our, our, our staff that works so diligently to, uh, to, hand, uh, to get these things done for the community, and they're not doing it for an award. They're doing it because they're public servants. And it's a, an example of being a perfect servant. Uh, I don't see Yvette Salinas in the audience, but I'd like to take this opportunity. Her department does a tremendous job of, of outreach. Uh, and, and of course, it's, it's a health department, and it's extremely important that they do that. We have a lot of partners, and I won't take time mentioning them, that help us uh, in, in partnering to do the, the outreach for our constituents, because we have so many rural areas. And uh, I know, Pastor, that we have a lot of challenges, uh, but I'm proud of this court and I'm proud of Cameron County because, yes, we recognize the challenges and we don't just recognize them, we try to do something about them. Uh, we haven't solved all of them by any means, but at least we see that there's some progress being done. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Item B, presentation by Ms. Jennifer Catalani. Did I pronounce that right? Catalani. Texas Department of Family and Protective Services regarding Cameron County Special Task Unit. Good evening, Judge Commissioners. Um, thank you all for having me today. Um, this is my coworker and friend, Elizabeth Sanchez. She is our Financial Exploitation Specialist for Region 11. Um, both her and I cover the 19 counties of Region 11. Um, my position is the Resource and External Relations Specialist. Um, elder abuse, neglect, and exploitation is a, um, continues to be a growing problem in our state and nation. Um, as our population of the elderly grows and we have the baby boomers coming up and um, therefore we expect a spike in um, intakes in the future. Um, in 2008, we received 93,000 reports of elder abuse, neglect, or exploitation in the state of Texas. Um, 1,136 of those was in Cameron County and we confirmed on 87 of those. Um, the workers who investigated those cases. I'm here today to talk to you specifically about the special task unit. The special task unit um, actually came out of Senate Bill 6 of the um, 79th Texas Legislative Session. Um, it is mandated that counties that have a population over 250,000 have a special task unit. Cameron County, of course, being um, one of those there are also a um, special task unit in um, Hidalgo County and Nueces County. And I'm the STU coordinator. It's one of the hats that I wear as um, part of my job, one of the many hats. So my job as STU coordinator is to recruit members for the special task unit for the counties that need them and to also work with the commissioner's court in appointing those members because all members must be appointed officially by commissioner's court. Um, the, the purpose of the special task unit is to staff complex cases that we are currently working on with, uh, regarding adult protective services. So um, if a worker is having difficulty with a case, is stuck, having trouble, you know, finding resources to assist the individual and help them in getting out of that situation that they're in, the worker can refer the case to the special task unit and um, they will come together during our meeting and provide input for the case and what can be done. Um, different agencies are represented on the special task unit. Um, it is required that a law enforcement representative, a mental health rep representative, and a um, legal expert be on each special task unit. And then the other members can be assigned as um, we choose. And uh, commissioners, courts, judges, commissioners can recommend members also. So it's not just what I recommend that the special task unit has to be. 
Um, there are different ways that uh, county commissioners courts have been appointing the members and it's completely up to y'all and I've had discussions with um, Judge Costco's in trying to set this you know meeting up because this has been a work in progress the Cameron County stew and Hidalgo stew had actually fallen apart and when I took over this position I've been working ever since and trying to get them back on track so I appreciate Judge Costco's in assisting me with that um, just a couple of examples of what is done in our region. Nueces County um, Commissioner's Court has each member who is interested to submit a letter of interest, a brief letter of interest and a brief resume to the Commissioner's Court. And from there, um, y'all, the Commissioner's Court up there reviews and then appoints the members um, based on those documents. Um, Hidalgo County does it completely different. They just chose to um, have me submit the list of people that I recruited and ju uh, the judge there added somebody else that he wanted and they appointed just from that list. So it is completely up to y'all when how that is done and I know that during our meeting on October 1st with the Cameron um, Special Task Unit, I enc encourage them to go ahead and send in a brief letter of interest and resume um, to the commissioner's court and just with the you know foresight that that might be what we want to go with in Cameron County so that we could get this on the ball the ball, ball rolling on this and have everybody appointed by the end of October hopefully or beginning of November so um, do y'all have any questions for me regarding the special task unit uh, I think it's a great idea and certainly it's needed and it does need to get put in place I serve uh, as chairman of a nonprofit called the Cameron County Mental Health Task Force, and I'll be glad to provide some names for you of potential candidates that would serve representing mental health on that task force. Okay. So great. Glad to get and one um, yeah, because I right now I only my list is I want to say six members with Cameron County. I do have the required members: um, a legal expert, law enforcement, and a mental health professional. Um, and then there's a couple other people on there. So the, the more the merrier. Do you have the mental health professionals uh, targeted already? or the, um, There is one, uh, one who's actually been on the Cameron Stew since it started. Okay. So, But it doesn't necessarily mean that only one mental health professional can be on the stew. Okay. So the, mo the more the merrier, um, well, whoever. Of, instead of him, uh, commissioner submitting to you, but you submit to us, he can submit to us as well since we have to make the decision anyway. And then, uh, then we'll all just get you know, you have to you point out the ones that we have to have that you've already sort of recruited. Right. Uh, and I imagine that with those folks, you've actually spoken to them and, and they're willing to make the time commitment to do this because some folks just, you know, yeah. want to pad the resume. Uh, but if you can do that, and the commissioner, any commissioner here can provide names, I guess, to my office, and then from there we can start a selection process. And of course, we're going to go to you for, you know, for, you know, for guidance and input as well, mm -hmm. if that's okay. Oh, yes. Or you can send much. to her, then she can send it back to us anyway. So, mm -hmm. however, y'all want to do it. Yeah, and if y'all want me to, do, um, do you still want me to get all the other, all the members to um, okay. submit their a brief yes. letter of interest and a resume? I think if they, okay. if, if they, can, if they can tunnel that to you mm -hmm. versus sending you and to us, just to you, and then from there you can, you know, you can weed them out and say, no, these aren't mm -hmm. after maybe you've gone through some kind of a vetting process. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, that's okay. fine with me. And I, I think, yes, I, I agree. I think that what the judge emphasized is, uh, and I want to mention it also, they have to have the commitment. Right. And, and that has to be up front. And I'm sure that you have some process in place that if they miss so many meetings or whatever, then you replace them. Am, mm -hmm. am I correct? We don't have anything, but we, just because it's a, vol it's a, nothing technically has been, and that manual is exactly how it is. And there aren't really any rules, but I think that it would be a good idea to establish them um, through however, whichever avenue I have to, because like I said, the Cameron and Hidalgo stews fell apart. And it has, it's really, it's taken, I've started this position in November, and it's taken this long, a year almost, for me to get everything back up and running, to figure out what I was supposed to do, first of all, as a new um, you know person starting this position and then to try to get everybody together and 
you know, I, I'm, I'm office in Corpus Christi, so I didn't know a bunch of people in down here. So it was um, quite difficult. And I've explained to everybody that I have recruited so far that the, import, the importance of being at the meetings. And they all, each person who has been recruited it has a special interest in the elderly and disabled population. Mm -hmm. They work in agencies that deal with um, those issues, and they are um, law enforcement who have a special interest in those populations too. Is there so, a minimum, maximum number? Sir? No, sir, there's so, not. Okay, so we could have as many yeah. as nine? Yes, well, the Hidalgo Stu has 13 members now. Okay. So um, the more the merrier. Yeah, as long as, um, you know, they everyone had needs should have that special interest in assisting the elderly and disabled population, of course, and, um, you know, a passion to do so because that's really what it's all about. And if they don't have that passion, they're not going to show up to the meetings, and which is the issue, you know, having a um, commitment to the special task. To, to the, to the, uh, the board member to select the chair and the meeting times and places? Um, I actually do that. As the STU coordinator, I um, coordinate all of the meetings. I set the agenda. I get the referrals from our workers. Um, I, you know, organize all that. I present, give training to the um, members of the special task unit. I give them training about what the special task unit is and what Adult Protective Services does so they have a clear understanding of what we're doing and that way they can give more educated input into our cases because, of course, we have things that we can and cannot do. Who would, uh, who would have the responsibility as far as, as you're concerned or your thoughts in, in setting a process so that there's consequences if they're not being active? I because think, agent, uh, organizations or agencies fall, will fall apart if you don't have that process. Right. And I think you just mentioned some that have been fallen apart, and I can almost tell you that it's because people got on there and they maybe they didn't understand the responsibilities or for whatever reason, for mm -hmm. X razón, you know, they, it, it fell apart. But I, I, I tend to think that it's the lack of that process we're discussing that will cause that. Right. Um, I think in, right now we're starting out slow. I only have these special task units once a quarter and for the meetings last about an hour and a half, hour and a half. So it is not that large of a time commitment. And I think that there's definitely a way that because these people are appointed by commissioner's court and a lot of the um, individuals who are recruited find that very honorable. They're, you know, they're very excited that they're gonna be appointed to something officially by commissioner's court. Um, but I think we could work together on some sort of a, um, for lack of a better word, punishment for missing, you know, two meetings, because that would be two, uh, you know, six months of time that they haven't been involved. You know, we could do something like that, and I could submit their names to y'all, and we just don't appoint at them. Because the term year, unless y'all specifies other, specify otherwise, is one year. Now, y'all have the power of saying, we'd rather the terms be two years, being y'all only meet quarterly, that's really, that's only um, four meetings in a year. So um, we prefer to do two years. Y'all can do that. But um, so, and I could work with y'all and we just don't reappoint them. If they miss um, a majority of the meeting, if they miss two meetings in a year, that's 50% of the meetings that they've missed in their first term. We just don't appoint them next year. Well, I think, I think for the purpose of transparency, uh, I think they should know upfront mm -hmm. expectations. Right. And, and, and not wait until it happens and then we say, well, you know, they're not getting ready. I, I think mm -hmm. they need to be given the expectations of what, what we expect from them as far as participation. Right. And, and you would might it work? Wait, you might want to wait and, and meet with a committee and have them give mm -hmm. you input or, I don't know, it's, it's up to you what process you're going to follow. And would it work for you, like I had um, suggested for me to inform them that if they miss two meetings, um, I, I would think so. they will not be reappointed? You know, it, that, when I first came on, the, um, some of the boards that, that, that I appoint to or the, the judge appoints to, there were a lot of folks that I did not reappoint to certain positions because they, they were they were chronically absent from meetings, mm -hmm. and and even though the policies said you know a, a member shall be removed if you miss three meetings in a row or whatever it is, no one was really doing it, and so 
you kind of stepped on, I did, on some toes for, you know, you've been out, you've you only been, you know, you've missed four or five, five meetings in a row, and uh, I think that's a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you do it maybe in a, in a letter to everyone that applies. Right, right. Uh, before, I so said, this is what, this is, this is what the, I think, Mr. Tamayo's right, I think these are the expectations. Mm -hmm. These are, you know, we meet once a quarter, meetings last, uh, two hours, whatever it is, mm -hmm. two hours, how, however we can call more meetings should the need arise. Uh, tell them where you're going to meet. You know, we're going to rotate from cities, you know, within the county. Uh, and, and also, if you miss two meetings, now if it, they're unexcused or excused, whatever, unless we be just hard. You say, you know, if you miss two meetings in a row, uh, then you're out. Right. But, you know, just, you know, we, we expect your resignation. Okay. Uh, but let me do this tomorrow. Send me an email, or whenever you get a chance, send me an email so I have you, I know I've got it somewhere. Send okay. it back, and then uh, I will put you in contact with somebody in my office that will coordinate that. And once you get all that, I'll, I'll put you in contact with her. You do all that, and then commissioners, any, any list of folks that you may want to think about. Uh, and you might want to send each, each commissioner <coughs> really what, how you're recruiting. I mean, what is it that you're, you see, you mentioned a resume. You mentioned, you know, some other things. Maybe send that to all the commissioners that this is what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. That way it, it'll, it'll help them, you know, during their, you know, uh, selection process as well. Okay. And then, uh, then we, we can't decide on the number yet, see how many applicants we have. If we have nine applicants mm -hmm. and they're, that are viable, then I don't have any problem appointing right. nine. Right. You know, so let's just do that. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Is and all right? of the members yes. that have been recruited okay. are, you know, qualified to, you know, I approve them okay. um, on our side of the spectrum. Um, and all of the members are actually, the way that they were recruited was the names were given to me by our, some of our supervisors in Cameron County. So they work with these people. Um, they know them from, um, I, one of them was from the Cameron County's uh, Mental Health Task Force. Um, Melissa Castellano, she's one of our supervisors. So, um, so these are all people that we know are gonna be good because we don't want the same situation to happen again where it falls apart. <coughs> We don't have anybody, so. All right. Melissa's a good. And y'all all have my um, cards. I put them on the in the right side pocket, so hopefully they're still in there. Well, they didn't fall out so on emails. the way from Corpus here. But I'll be sending y'all emails, and if y'all have any other questions, there's all my numbers, email. Feel free to contact. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you. If I can go back to item A real quick, just uh, do I hear a motion to acknowledge that presentation? So uh, moved. By Commissioner Thamayo, saying by Commissioner Wood. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed, item carries. Item B, the one we just did, do I hear a motion to acknowledge Jennifer's report? So moved. moved by Commissioner Wood, signed by Commissioner Benavides. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. Let me go to, a, let me take a couple of items out of order. I know some of these guys have a, a long drive back. Let me go to item 4D, consideration authorization to send a formal letter to the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Eric Shinsky asking for the construction of a Veterans Affairs Hospital in the Rio Grande Valley. David? <clears throat> Judge and Commissioners, um, we got some information from Mr. Toto Huerza. Um, 4D and 4E um, is information in the backup that you should have, and they're here today to explain a little bit further what they're going to want from you all. Okay. Well, let's do on, on item 4D. Do we have a formal letter already, or did, did you all draft one? And then we're going to just kind of flower it up, or do you want us we to? We don't have a formal letor, but we have a, uh, a request for a formal letter, right? Okay. okay. Um, well, we can put that together. Let's put it together. Right. We'll do it. That's not, that's not a problem. Do I hear a motion to, you know, do you all want to say something? Because it's going to pass, I, I would assume. So, Dreto, you want to go ahead and just give us a? Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Uh, you know, you ain't running this out, are you? No, just figured you have a long drive. Uh, we've been going around getting uh, support from uh, other county governments. Uh, and the, the reason we're doing this is this, because that we have an election coming up November 3. And for us to get uh, some type of uh, media coverage, um, we thought, you know, that you guys, uh, I mean, not you guys, the commissioner's court uh, has a video and you come out on Channel 60, I think. Hopefully that, uh, that, that your people in Cameron County and other, and other counties watch that program and they can watch us making the presentation and they can watch you in action saying that you support <coughs> this resolution, which is uh, the resolution is to support uh, Proposition 8. Proposition 8 uh, 
briefly, it's, it's uh, authorizes the state of Texas to provide monies, uh, land, and other resources for the construction and maintenance of veterans hospitals in the state. And the reason we did that, we asked for it from our state, leg state legislature, is because it, the VA, the Veterans Administration, was telling us, you know, that we didn't have any support down here in Texas locally. Uh, and over there, they saw numbers. We also had to introduce another legislation, which was uh, House Bill 86, a resolution submitted by Representative Baron Peña, that they want only memor memorialized the Congress to construct a Veterans Administration Hospital in the Valley. And with that, we felt that next time we go to Washington, that they will give us ammo and say, look, we, have, we do have the support. The state of Texas, the governor, all the county commissioners are with us. Uh, in the past, we've read those letters of endorsement from, from most of our local governments, cities, and school boards, and everything. But uh, they, didn't, they, they, didn't, they didn't count. We say they didn't count because they didn't vote in our favor. So uh, that's basically our first request. Now, our second request is that we have a petition going uh, to Sec uh, Secretary of Veterans Affairs Eric Chinseski. And all we're saying is that we want a hospital in the Rio Grande Valley. And since one is being expanded right now in Harlingen, why not make it a hospital? Why spend all that money for a, um, a medical facility that could easily be turned into a really full-fledged hospital? And uh, it's gonna need some more money, but the, the, the structure is there. It's, it's, it's turning out pretty good. I, I think they already done all the, the, the steel building, and it, it, it's starting to uh, take shape, take form. So uh, we just want to say, tell him, Eric Chensetsky, uh, please help us. <clears throat> the reason that is because uh, Senator Benson has been helping us a lot. I mean, well, he probably is still helping us from above, okay? So, right. so you were right, okay? I'm sorry, Judge Commissioners. No, no, he's, he's still helping us. Uh, I had a flashback when they started talking about Cameron Park. <laughs> <laughs> because when we started working in Cameron Park, there was nothing there. We were getting water from Resaca, and we did all kinds of stuff, but protested, marched, what have you. And so now I'm seeing results. Uh, Senator Corning, sent a letter to President Obama this week, uh, this week and, uh, and he's reminding uh, President Obama that he had co-sponsored our bill in the 2000, 2007 uh, session. And when he came down here in his campaign, he told us three times that he was gonna help us. So we're just hoping that uh, President Obama answers that letter. And so via our still us getting more support, because all, all, all that we're doing, we're gonna let people up, up, up the river uh, know what's happening, so they know we can support. Because we, we do need a veterans hospital. We do, we need, do, we do need it. And uh, it's been a long struggle, and we're, we're getting tired. And sometimes we feel like we, it's within our grasp, and then whack. If it's not stimulation, it's the health project. If it's not that war, it's something else that it just pushes to the side. But we still come back. And as long as you support us, our local elected officials support us, you know, and as long as the veterans and our community support us, we'll continue doing it. And it's, it's like I said, it's been a long struggle, and uh, we don't like to take the time, the important time of our elected government down here, but sometimes we feel that we have to. And on Monday, I mean, Tuesday, no, I'm sorry. Monday we met with the Wilson County Commissioner's Court, and they, they approved the resolution unanimously in the letter. On October 6th we met with the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court, and they also approved it uh, unanimously. So that's, that's two of the county governments. Our next stop is gonna be up in Star County. And uh, we don't know yet, but we're trying to make it before the November 3rd election. So that's basically why, why we decided to come before you. And we appreciate your time your efforts, and hopefully the letter goes out today or tomorrow. Thank you. Homer? Thank you. <laughs> Judge, commissioners, uh, you've been with us since day one, so we want to thank you for that. We want to thank you for the opportunity to listen and see all our veterans here. But Bishop Peña is behind us 100%.
Bishop Pena even took our petition to the Bishop's Conference in Texas to let all the bishops of Texas unite with our effort. And Abba Manama is really growing, and everybody in Washington now realizes that there's another world south of San Antonio. <laughs> For the longest time, Washington thought South Texas stopped in San Antonio. But with your efforts and uh, all the other electoral officials behind us, I think we're going to see some reality, especially for our older veterans that can no longer make the trip to San Antonio. And some of our younger vets that are coming back from Iraq are really injured. Right now we got 500 from the National Guard in Western who just left last weekend. And those 500 are going to Iraq in December. And hopefully they'll come back, but they need the facilities. So thank you. Thank you, Homer. Do you all have a, a, a draft letter that, that you've been circulating that you need for us to do, or do you want us just to come up with our own? We, Either way is fine. Yeah, we, we send you a draft letter, but uh, I wrote it so it's not that hot. The, the, the resolution. I wrote this long resolution. The resolution was, was, was uh, the resolution, uh, we got help from, okay. uh, from whom are you? Well, just, just so we know, if you have something that you've already got that you want us to just you know, put together, that's not a problem. I think we're going to do we can this. Do that. But, okay. I mean, yeah, we, first of all, Judge, uh, uh, Commissioners, thank you for allowing us the time to come before you uh, to discuss this, this such important issue, Proposition 8. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to do for the viewers also is just give you a little background of the proposition itself. You know, there's approximately about 1.7 1, 1 million veterans that reside in Texas. Um, we, uh, the Veterans Affairs has nine hospitals in the state of Texas. One in Amarillo, Big Springs, Bonham, Dallas, Houston, Kerrville, San Antonio, Temple, and Waco. In the fiscal year of two, 2008, the, uh, the VA reported or recorded that there was 51,000 inpatient visits in these nine hospitals. A lot of them, especially from San Antonio, were from the Rio Grande Valley. Veterans have sacrificed much to keep their country safe and secure and deserve to have ready access to their benefits, including health care. They have earned it. Uh, Proposition 8 would encourage the VA, the United States Department of, uh, of Veterans Affairs, to partner with the state to make this happen. And actually, it authorizes the state to sit down and negotiate getting us a hospital down here in South Texas. A constitutional amendment would be the appropriate uh, mechanism to ensure that the state would, would actually get those hospitals built. The, 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 one of the things that, that a lot of people don't know is that there's been a lot of work put into Proposition 8 from the very beginning. We had a lot of our veterans that made trips to San Antonio, and I mean to Austin, and testified before the 81st uh, legislature. And, and to us, it, it's, it's an opportunity that doesn't come very yeah. seldom, okay? And it's, it, we just gotta make it work. We got 45 days to get it out throughout the state. It's a statewide issue. This is why we, we applaud you for allowing us to come before you, before your viewers here in, in Hidalgo, I mean in Cameron County, and the other viewers that actually see your, uh, your commissioner's court meetings, okay? The, the issue would be that, that we need to really, really get people to go out and support Proposition 8 because we expect a low turnout. There's really no too many candidates, okay? So there's a couple of more other amendments that they're, they're related to some uh, veteran issues. And, and I'm not saying, you know, they're not important, but I think when it comes down to, you know, providing acute health care in the Valley for our Valley veterans that they have earned, I think Proposition 8 is the way to go. Okay? Thank you for allowing us time to be here. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I see you all, and I see you all every, I mean, frequently. I remember the meetings that, that, that we used to go in West Laco when all this started not too long ago, and, and I want to commend you guys because um, 
it, you know, what, one of the things that we've emphasized is try to build coalitions and partnerships. And as only we've had, in depth, we've had these conversations many times about all the veterans groups finally, finally coming together as one voice. I know there's some disagreements every once in a while, but you know, you have those amongst yeah. families too. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but all the veterans groups, whether it's the veterans of foreign wars or the American Legion or the, you know, the, the guys from Iraq or Iran, whatever, I mean, all the groups have come together. And that's what, you know, I, I, Homer, I think I saw you in Harlingen not too long ago. I said, you've got to keep that focus and don't let anyone deviate you from that course because you know, you're going to have that, you know, but you can't just stay on the course and stay focused. But, but you know where we stand, and uh, this commissioner's uh, court has been very, very supportive of all veterans' issues all the time. I don't believe we've ever said no to you. Uh, and we will continue to say yes at all times. So having said that, do I hear a motion to, to uh, uh, authorize the sending of a formal letter to the Secretary of Veterans Affairs? So, so moved. Moved by Commissioner Wood, second by Commissioner Tamayo. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. Item E, consideration authorization for the issuance of a statement in support of veterans and efforts to pass Proposition 8 on the November 3rd, uh, 2009 ballot. We will put that, do we have to put that as an agenda item with the actual deal or just do it? This is, we support Proposition 8 today. Right. We can do that. Today, so we can get it out next week. Okay, do I hear a motion to support Proposition 8? So, so moved. Moved by Commissioner Tamayo, second by Commissioner Wood. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. item carries. Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the veteran uh, community, we appreciate civic leaders like yourself and the rest of the commission for all your proactive support in, in any veteran issue that we brought before you. Thank you very much, and Thank may you. God bless you. Thank you, Emilio. If y'all need to step out, now's the time to do it before we get started. If you you don't have Thank to go. You Thank you for being here. Right. But I know you got to drive back to Hidalgo. All right, good to see you guys. Oh, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so Goodbye. much. Yes, I hold it up. Bye. Take care, man. Thank we'll you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, stay well. Thank you. The game? They're on the open. I see you now, man. <laughs> Item, but let's go back to uh, presentations. Item C, presentation of the fourth quarter report for, for the National Bridge System. Give us the gloomy news again. Yes. Judge, commissioners, one more quarter of uh, rough news for our international bridges. You have the fourth quarter report in front of you. Um, starting with the Gateway Bridge, uh, crossings at, at this bridge um, for the months of um, of um, July, August, and September were 910,681. Uh, that was a 4% decrease over this period, uh, the same period last year. <clears throat> In terms of revenue, uh, that was 1.324 million in revenues that we um, had with about 8% decrease over the same time period last year. The free trade bridge, uh, total crossings were 163,000, uh, about a 6% decrease, <clears throat> and revenues were 529,000. That was a 4% decrease. And then the Veterans Bridge, at the Veterans Bridge, we had 406,206 cars crossing this quarter which was a 16% decrease. And the revenues were 1.5 million, a 15% decrease. Um, our variance for this quarter or for this year, 1.2 million. Dave, I was gonna ask you the, um, and I think you just told me that, the, the, final, the final number how much was that off from what we had, were, when we were talking with the budget? Was one point, was a little bit less or about the same? About the same. Mm -hmm. I know that we were anticipating about 1.3 million less. Yeah, 
No, but I'm talking in, in the total bridge system. It was no, it was significantly higher. If I remember right. It was basically what we had budgeted. Okay. Much. Well, we said we budgeted. I mean, when I'm talking about what we budget for the coming year, is is it? I'm trying to relate the actual loss per the final report to what we've been talking about even during the budgetary process. Did it, did this come within the 1.1.2, million? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I believe it did. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we anticipated correctly. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Yes. Well. We yeah, we anticipated when we were going through the budgetary process a shortfall of 1.3 million, right? I think that's what you based your, your future projection on. So now the real number was what? Now that you've closed out, was it how far off the 1.3 million were we? We might have been off uh, maybe about 150,000. That's what I'm thinking. I have okay. To look at it. In, in our in our favor, Correct. a little bit. Okay. Okay. Good. And the budgeted figures, um, I think it's about 12% less for this coming year is what we're budgeting. Now, my thought, when you, when you budgeted the revenues for the coming year, just refresh my memory, you budgeted the, these real dollars the, the, that we're talking about less. You also, did you knock it off by a certain percentage? I don't remember. Yes, we decreased it between 10 and 12 percent okay. additionally. All right. So you, de you decreased it from 10 to 12 percent from the real number yes. that we got in this, you know, in this budget. Right. Okay. All right. Any questions? Do I hear a motion to acknowledge David's report? So moved. Move by Commissioner okay. Tamayo, second by Commissioner Benavides. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Adam carries. Item D, presentation update on the ongoing Cameron County drainage study. <clears throat> Judge Commissioners, um, late last year, early this year, we were awarded a grant by EDA to do a countywide study. Um, the, uh, the consulting firm of SP Consultants was awarded that grant, and they've been working on a countywide project for us. They're going to do an update for you today. Tom Mounts with SP Consultants is here to do that. Judge Commissioners, it's an honor to be here today and it's an honor for SP Consultants to be working with the local consultants here in Cameron County and with your staff in developing this project for the rural areas of Cameron County. Wanted to uh, just go over tonight uh, where we stand on the project, what the project purpose is, our advisory committee that's been established, an update of where we are in a, a chronology of the problem areas that have been identified how we're approaching the study. Uh, it's a little different than, than some of the studies that have been done in the past. How we're working with the county to establish a uh, countywide database and then coordination with other studies. The purpose of the project was to develop a drainage plan to provide the county with accurate information for a higher level of flood, flood protection to its residents and communities in defined problem areas and particularly focusing in on those problem areas that were identified as a result of the significant rainfall event that happened with Hurricane Dolly. County staff uh, set up an advisory committee to work with us of experts from the county and uh, adjacent and other agencies, including the staff of, you see here, David Garcia, uh, Mr. Hinojosa, Ms. Galvan, and uh, Mr. Sanchez. The advisory committee members, in addition to the county staff, is made up of the general managers of the three large drainage districts, Sonny Phillip with the city of Laferia, and uh, Joel Saldivar of I IBWC. I notice we left one off of here. We also have Cheryl Flores with uh, Texas Water Development Board and the local office of that is also in involved in the advisory committee. Our consultants primarily are myself as the project manager Chris Stewart, who's with me here tonight, is our planner. And Jack Brown with Brown Leal Associates is our primary local consultant helping with this project. These are the tasks that are set up in the project and, and a brief uh, input of where we are. We've received the input. We've looked at all the, we've gathered as many of the uh, 
previous studies that have been done, and we'll show a slide that shows a little bit of that uh, in a minute. We're creating the database, putting all that together. We're beginning now to do the survey and to do specific uh, hydraulic and hydrologic studies of those areas that have been identified. And we're looking into uh, focusing in on the areas that we're dealing with, with the potential to, a, to look for additional grant funding. And then we'll begin to look into the alternatives. It's so maybe a little bit hard to see in white are the watersheds that drain into Cameron County, uh, overlaid on the county boundary, and the drainage districts boundaries, uh, the active drainage districts and the communities. This project is zeroing in on the undeveloped areas outside of the major communities. And for the most part outside of the existing drainage districts, those have done additional studies and have uh, done a lot of work and uh, we've helped with some of that. And so we looked at those areas that were outside of that. We could you could you hold that for a minute? Sure. And this slide, what we've done is through the advisory committee and the staff, we went through and, and asked them to identify those areas that had the most problems from Dolly and uh, other floods, but primarily from Dolly. And so the, this is a depiction showing on that same watershed and district boundary map, those areas that we identified that had major flooding issues with Dolly. Well, unless I'm misinterpreting your map, I worry that you've left out some areas that are, in my opinion, should be priority. That we're missing some areas? Yes. Yes, I think you are. Well, we're, I wish I had had more involvement in this. Well, that's one of the reasons why we're here tonight is to present what we've gotten so far. We're going to be getting some additional public input. We're going to, we'll ask the, the county staff to get with your staff. And well, if we I can, definitely have a lot of more input. And if we can get, and we'll, we'll take as much input as we can. We're going to show you the areas that we're, we're, we're zeroing in on. And again, these were the areas that they identified. Who, who's they? Who is they? This is the, the advisory committee and the county staff. And how, how, how did the advisory committee get picked? Because I had no input on that, and I wish I had. Yeah, we're here just to give you an update on what's going on with this study. It's a, so it's a small study. You know, we focused on the drainage district managers and some of the folks in the La Feria area that have been affected in, in, in your area. And so this is the problem area prioritization that this particular group that was on the previous slide um, was focusing on. Well, and I again, these are just, just areas that have been identified. Um, this is a study that's being done. You know, nothing concrete has been decided or anything, so. Well, I just feel like you waste time when you do a study and, and don't involve the people that were hurt the most. I don't think anyone from, from, from our staff or, or from uh, was Louis Ada involved? Was Louis Ada has been involved, yes. Well, I didn't, when he mentioned the names, I didn't hear Louis Ada. Our engineering staff has been involved and Louis has been involved. So. Well, I, you're, you're missing a lot of areas and, and you're saying that this is, to, that's why you're bringing it forward, but I definitely, and I don't want to take time today, but we've been having a lot of meetings uh, and in fact, we have one scheduled tomorrow, uh, mentioning <coughs> the, the Theo Cano area and so on. Uh, and they've, they've only been working on this for four months, and so this is primarily the reason why we wanted to come before you today, so that you all can get an idea of what they're working on and then okay. provide the input. Well, I'm sure we can add more people to your advisory committee? Sure. Okay. I want to be on it. Okay. One of, the, one of these areas that is identified here is the Tia Cano. Um, and we'll, we'll show you the, li the list here after the, the picture, but these were in general, the areas that, that identified as having the, the biggest flooding issues. And then we specifically prioritize those. You see here again the same map, but with the, those areas identified and numbered. And, and we, through the advisory committee, asked them to identify those a little bit further, who was involved, um, what was going on. And so we have through, um, as, we, as we begin to get into actually looking at the hydrology and hydraulics, these are the descriptions of the areas that, that we're con concentrating on. 
this is the first seven. There's seven more in the next flood. The North Flood Way area, Santa Rosa, Tiacano, FM 800, uh, North and South, the area around Baker Potts Road, Haas Lane, uh, the Combs area. Are those uh, prioritized? Uh, They're not prioritized on this list. No, this is just this is just the total list. The numbers one through fourteen are just arbitrary. They're, that's not the list of priority. It's just we started numbering. The, this is just the fourteen areas that have been in general identified as the the, the ones with the, the largest problem. And the, the, the numbers that relate to this, they're not, that's not prioritized by number, that's just number one through 14 as we put them together. We'll show you in a minute how we're prioritizing them for the study. This is the chronology of studies that have been done, and there, it shows that there have been a number of studies done on the various communities of the county as a whole, portions of the county, the drainage districts since Hurricane Beulah, and between Hurricane Beulah and Hurricane Dolly. And all of these studies have been done in a very similar manner. This again is just the list, and they've been done by a number of different firms. And as we get into this project and start looking at these areas that have been identified as having problems, we're looking to see what projects were uh, recommended by those studies, if any of those had affected these areas and whether or not they were completed. Uh, for instance, one of the big studies was the Corps of Engineers and some of those projects have been done, some have not. What's currently underway? And we began to look at why there have been so many different studies and yet the flooding problems still exist. And so we're looking in, part of our focus is to uh, change a little bit the way that we look at the flooding issues. We're studying the outlying areas, we're looking at both small and large storms because all the drains are interrelated. They're interrelated into the Rio Grande floodway system. The IBWC system is a major component uh, of what happens and the way IBWC operates those floodways is a major component to contributing to the flooding problems uh, that have been identified. And so as we get into the study, we're going to be making recommendations for capital improvements, regulations, or both. On this slide, I don't, without going into a lot of detail on the technical, I want, just want to show you a little bit the traditional way of doing these kinds of studies is to look at the peak flow and then to attenuate that peak flow through detention or some other way. And that doesn't seem to be the best way to handle what is happening in Cameron County. If you look at the, the slide, the, the picture to the right, it shows the, the black hydrograph, which is a, showing the, how the rainfall would, would, would occur, is the traditional way throughout most of Texas and in Austin and the area that we're from, it, that's pretty much the way it happens. You have a really high peak and you get a lot of your volume storm very quickly. Cameron County, though, is the red line on the right in that the peaks are much smaller, but the volume of water stays around much longer because of the flat topography, because of the limited infrastructure and the, the, uh, the infrastructure that you do have in the, in the drainage districts and so forth can only move water so fast because of the topography. So it becomes more of a volumetric, volumetric approach is what we're looking at in terms of instead of zeroing in on the peak and trying to control that peak. We cannot make the, the channels and the infrastructure big enough to handle those big peaks, but we can look at the volume, and that really is the problem. The water sits around for a long time. It's a lot of water. It sits there, and you have to move it out. And rather than providing storage in the streets and, and property that's not made for that, we want to look at ways to change land use to limit impervious cover to provide additional storage facilities, maybe mitigation banks and so forth to deal with the volume of water and look at that more than the peak. Although the peak, it does come into play. We're gonna be looking more at how that volume and how long the water takes to get out before we uh, can do it. So our approach is to look at the channels, look at 
providing additional retention or detention in either the Rosacas or some of the wetlands, maybe some water supply storage. We've got some, some ideas from uh, our local partners and from the county staff to be able to help out with some of the water supply issues potentially with the runoff to capture it and to use it later uh, to, to assist in the water supply issues. So we'll be looking at all of those. Uh, there's some obstacles to that. Part of that's land availability. Uh, part of that is understanding what IBWC is doing, and that's part of what you're meeting tomorrow is to, is to begin to do, is to find out a little bit more about how IBC operates. And some of, some of what happens with the Cameron County flood is you're at the mercy of what happens with IBWC and how they regulate Hidalgo County. And so other studies are going to be looking at that, and we'll be coordinating with those other studies. All the drains interrelate. So we're, we're trying to look at those coordinated efforts. Uh, for instance, in Cameron County District 3s and 5, we looked at, at their channels, and some of those channels go either north or south or east or west, depending on which way the rain is. And so we'll be looking at how that can be utilized in these areas as well. In gathering all this information, we're helping the county put it all into a GIS database that it's available for the public and for all of the uh, cities and communities and the county staff to uh, gather the information to to get information that's usable and that can be used to for disaster recovery when that is necessary maintain the records and to provide easy access as I said for all the the entities that come into play this is our schedule we're about halfway through we're now into the the meat of the study in terms of doing our survey, doing our uh, hydrologic and hydraulic analysis, and um, beginning to look at the alternatives for those types of areas that we're looking at. We're going to focus in on the existing conditions to see what's going on. And the three areas that we're focusing in on with those problem areas are the North Floodway, because a lot of that area drains to the North Floodway and how that North Floodway is operated has a lot to do with how that area can drain. And we're looking at alternatives to using the North Floodway, some other potential uh, ways to connect so that we can get that out. The, there's an, a, one of the focus areas is the Latina area, which is outside of the drainage districts. And so we're going to be looking at that and that potential, that has a big potential to do an additional grant. And so that's part of our study as well. And then with some of the other areas, there, there are, there's a few of those areas that are already being undertaken by the drainage districts to correct issues and, and provide drainage to, and some of them we're going to be doing some more. And so we're back to that slide again. And the areas along around drainage district three and around drainage district one, we're going to be working with those people because they're actually obviously on our ad, ad, advisory committee, excuse me, um, and trying to address those issues. We, uh, the Laferia area, we're, in this study, we're not going to be looking at Laferia itself uh, and that area that's in red there very much with this study because we've just signed a contract with Laferia. They also got a grant this year from the Texas Water Development Board for a flood protection grant for the community of Laferia. And our area there, when we went after that grant, was all the way to the North Floodway. But what we're going to concentrate with their study and we talked with them today to kick that project off. We're going to be concentrating on the ferry itself, the Tiacano, and the Arroyo Colorado. And then with the county study, we'll be doing the connections to the North Floodway, looking at alternative ways to maybe operate the gates. Right now, IBWC comes out and closes the gates, and so you're at the mercy until they open the gates again. So is there another way to do that? Is there other gate structures that can be utilized and still provide function? Are there other canals potentially that can be connected to help that overflow if those gates do get closed? Or can we run a parallel channel to the floodway that doesn't carry a lot of water but will provide positive drainage in the, in the event that those get closed? And we're also showing here on the side where we're actually going out and surveying all those connections to the North Floodway. That's one of the things that we've got Brownlee all doing right now uh, is surveying those, those areas. And so we're focusing in, even though these are individual hotspots, we are looking at the entire watershed. 
We're not just looking at a specific location. We're looking at that entire area and doing it on a watershed basis. And we're um, merging that information with the master plans that District 1 has, District 3 has, District 5 has, Harlingen has. We're looking at the areas outside, the areas that they drain to and how they drain it, the Laferia uh, study that's getting underway. And so the county study is going to concentrate on those other areas outside of those. And as I said, focus in on the, the Latina area, kind of coordinating with the districts to take care of these other little hot spots and other areas that, that lie just outside the districts. And District 3 is already addressing three of those, I believe, right? Is that correct? Um, and then working with Sonny in Laferia and his study so that we get a coordinated effort between the two studies. <laughs> Where are you connecting the dots to uh, Hidalgo County and their, and their drainage? The, or is that part of your scope here? Our, it's really not. The only, the only place where Hidalgo County comes in is trying to find out from them and, and IBWC how much water they're putting through both the Arroyo and the, and the North Floodway uh, so that we can use that information in capacity analysis to look at what we can, how that impacts the, the drainage from Cameron County. Some of that information is available, some of it is not. Uh, IBWC primarily has models for draining the, the Rio Grande, but they really don't have much information on the local drainage. And so it's, we're gonna, we're gonna be coordinating with Hidalgo County. Um, the new study that's getting ready to take place, that's gonna have an impact on that. So whoever the consultant is with that, um, hopefully us, but you never know. But I, um, I guess what, so what I'm, we're I'm asking is- we're gonna that study as well. Yeah, are you, are you gonna be coordinating with whomever it is on in Hidalgo County because their water flows this way, yes. and, and that was part of the problem that we had in some of our low-lying areas. A lot of the water was flowing, you know, from, from, from the west this way through Cameron and, and, and southern Willacy County. So I guess th this is great to do. It's a good, it's a good beginning point, but it's, and I know it's a work in process, but you've got to connect that dot to Hidalgo County. Yeah. Exactly. And that's we understand that, Judge, okay. and that's, that's exactly what we're trying to do. We are going to... Part of that's been hung up because of what's going on with the three county study and how that's going okay. to impact it. Uh, you know, with the with the, the money that, that's here, we're, look, we're trying to zero in on the local issues and get enough information on that floodway that we can say, here's what's going to happen. Some of that may not be available, and if it's not, it's beyond the scope of this study to do some of that. We've just got to rely on the information that they give us or coordinate with the new study, which we'll be looking primarily at that. That's going to be, I think, a big focus uh, on that three county study that's getting ready to, to take place because that's really where it all comes down is that, you know, your, your drainage gets stuck with their drainage and depending on how IBWC operates or allows those drainage structures to operate, you're kind of at that, the mercy of both of those. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we understand that and that you understand that and that we work with them to get a coordinated effort. We think there's a better way to do it from what we've found so far. Now, they, we may not have all the information yet, but what we've been able to get so far, we, we know that, that there's a lot of coordination that's lacking that, that needs to happen. And Harlingen is already putting an effort together for the meeting y'all are having tomorrow with IBWC and so forth. All of that is, we're beginning to get all that and it's all kind of going on at the same time. And we're gonna try and tap into that as much as possible. You mentioned the fact that there's been a lot of studies done <laughs> and it's amazing, I know Mr. Pena's in the audience. And this reminds me of, uh, when we were working with uh, dropout prevention and we studied those poor kids to death and never did anything with them. Uh, this kind of reminds me of that. We've got so many studies going and there have been so many studies in the past. I hope I get to, to see the day when we get answers. And, and when we get to that point, that's when we have succeeded. Uh, yes, I could appreciate the work you've done, but I'm, I can tell you right now I'm, I'm disappointed, David. Uh, I hadn't done any information on this. Uh, our, our area was the worst flooded. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I want you to go back and tell me what this committee has prioritized. I want you to list it for me. Not on the map, but articulate the areas you have prioritized already. The area that has been prioritized um, is the North Floodway, the area that drains North Floodway. 
the north side of Harlingen, the Laferia area, that northeast end of the county is the number one from the from the advisory committee. That's the area where all the problems occurred with Dolly, the primary problems. The other ones you see on the map uh, in the middle are those areas that had isolated problems, and those are priorities too because they're 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 issues. But the main area, the area with the most problems are those areas between the Arroyo Colorado and the North Floodway that drain primarily to the North Floodway. That's my understanding was the, was the number one problem and the way that the gates were shut off after the flood came through here and then hit Hidalgo County and they came back and shut the gates then the water sat. And so we're looking at that area is the main area that we're gonna concentrate on is that North Floodway area and the Laferia study is going to concentrate on that on Laferia and the area between Laferia and Harlingen and uh, primarily looking at that going south to the Arroyo and then as they go north then the county study will pick that up as it approaches the north floodway. So the number one priority is that northeast side of the county. Obviously the eastern side is has a lot of uh, open land and uh, low population, but these were these, these were all the population areas that they identified outside of the primarily outside the districts. There was flooding that occurred in San Benito and Harlingen and so forth that has, has continued to occur. We've addressed some of those issues and our, those are being fixed by the drainage districts. We did a study last year in District Five and the year before in District Three, and those are being or three and five. Uh, I got that reversed, but those are being addressed now by those districts and providing additional facilities there. And then, as I said, District 3 has already moved forward with these areas that are on the, the boundary of <coughs> District 3. Several of these areas that are already extending uh, channels and, and waterworks to, to approach those and to provide some positive drainage for those areas. Now, have you involved uh, anyone from TxDOT on this? Because I think that's critical. Yes. We, it, we, it's it's we, extremely we, we, critical. I, I just yes. had a, a very good conversation yesterday with a TxDOT representative. And, and, uh, and I think that we have to coordinate all this. They've got to be involved. Yes, ma'am. When is your next meeting? The next advisory committee meeting will probably be in about three to four weeks. We haven't said it yet. But on the schedule, it's, it's about every six weeks. So you just had one? We just had one a couple of weeks ago, yes. And where do you hold the meetings? At the, uh, at the annex? City complex in... in uh, oh, the annex? Yeah. Yes, the annex. Okay. Well, there's people that can be on that committee that aren't necessarily housed at that annex. From, from the list you gave me, it seems like it was sort of a, an accommodating situation that most of the people you have on that have their offices there. Other people can travel there to be on that committee. Okay. That uh, concludes our presentation. I want to thank you and we'll, uh, we'll continue to work with the county and with the county staff as you, as you direct us to work and those are the areas that we're prioritizing. Thank you. You know, anybody else that, that uh, not only Commissioner Tamayo, but anybody else from the court that wishes to obviously keep it short of a quorum, obviously, but anybody else that wishes to sit on that committee, just uh, let, let, let David know. But just make sure that, you know, we don't get stuck with having three people show up, you know, inadvertently. Okay. Judge, I did. I, I uh, mentioned that at the last uh, Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council meeting, um, there's more stimulus money coming down or work money. And uh, if they can get uh, a lot of, 50% of it was set aside for housing. And they're trying to get that changed to make more money available for projects such as this. And one of the things that was uh, discussed was the possibility of, instead of breaking all the money up by all the small entities. Do one big project. Doing one big project that right. would alleviate not only well, Hidalgo County, Cameron County, and Willisie County. That's great. Which I think is a good idea. What they'll need to do is, similar to what you've done, you all have compiled a lot of these studies that have been done, 
with your study, and they'll need to be compiling your study with those studies. Right, everything will have to go together. Uh, Commissioner, to follow up on what you just said, I've been the last, in fact, I drove down here from Galveston <laughs> this morning. Uh, I've been at the Texas Flood Management Association, and the Texas Department of Rural Affairs was there and made a presentation about what you just what just mentioned, that they had uh, $1.5 billion to give out when they did the original ORCA list. They have now, they're now working on the application and expect to get it any day now for about another 1.3 million. They're, they're gonna have $3 billion totally, total. And yes, half of that is uh, earmarked for housing, but that means that there's another round of grant funding that will be available almost immediately. And the other issue that brought up related to that, related to the grant funding is the, the uh, HMGP grants that are available through the Department of Public Safety with the hazard mitigation planning. That is, as a projects like, as we do studies like this and identify projects and those get put in your hazard mitigation plan, then they're available for that funding as well. And they have additional funding for those also right now that they're still accepting applications for. And speaking to the Public director of the, um, Lower Rio Grande Development Council, he, he mentioned that, and again, but we're, we're sort of kind of at the mercy of Hidalgo mm -hmm. County. Yeah. You know, they got more they seats, more they got more votes. I think mm -hmm. that's what's frustrated some members of the commission that, that, uh, that were on that board for a long time. So we're gonna have to convince them that, that you know, since we speak, and then when I talk to JD, you know, we speak as a region, when we get to those areas, all of a sudden they know it's, you know, it, it comes over here. So we do need to convey to them strongly how we need a regional drainage plan. And part of that's gonna, it's gonna take millions of dollars to implement this project, exactly. you know, to take it to its fruition. We're I mean, talking a whole lot of money. Right. Uh, but but uh, I would just continue to, to converse with them and commissioners as you visit with them to start working on those votes from Hidalgo County and, <laughs> and uh, try to get just to come up to something that, that's reasonable. I, when I met with Ken the other day, I said, look, I don't, we don't want to be greedy. We just want to be, you know, we want to be treated yes. fairly. And, and at times we, we're not. So um, I appreciate right. your, your, you. your report. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge the report? So moved. By Commissioner Benavides. Second. Second by Commissioner Wood. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. Consent items 3A, through double R. Um, any items anybody wish to take out and discuss separately? I'd like to take out item I <coughs> and item O. Judge, can we table item D? B as in boy? D as in David. D as in David? Okay. Anything else? What were the ones we were pulling out, Judge? I'd I like to discuss separately item I and item O. Hearing none and sensing none. There's more? I'm sorry? D, D is okay. okay. So we don't need to Apparently D is okay. Okay, that's fine. Legal. Legal D in there. If not, do I hear a motion to approve all consent items with the exception of item I and O that will be discussed separately? So moved. Moved by Second. Commissioner Tamayo, so by Commissioner Wood. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. Item I, consideration possible approval of agreement with Valley Baptist to fund two positions for transporting mental health patients to mental facilities. Uh, we've been working on this. Robert, you wanna come up and start uh, for months. Uh, and because of the issues we've had trying to get all the constables to, to cooperate and participate in the mental health transport, Robert has been the, Robert Lopez, our constable from the Rio Hondo area, has been, you know, instrumental in, in, in working through this. Uh, and so I've shared his frustration via many a call. So when we were going through the budget process, um, you know, we had to eliminate the, the warrant officer position. Uh, and I thought about, you know, in, if we can, and that's subject to legal, but if we can uh, utilize these two warrant officers and make them full-time mental health transport officers. The money, the money came from, or is coming from Valley Baptist. I, I approached uh, Valley Baptist see if they'd be willing to do something like this. Uh, and after much uh, 
discussions between their legal counsel and, and our legal counsel, Dilbia particularly, who was instrumental in, in drafting the contract, uh, Valley Baptist has agreed to uh, fund uh, these two officers uh, or these two employees to, to do nothing but mental health transport. Uh, they're going to cover, Martha, correct me if I'm wrong, they're going to cover basically not only their, their compensation, all the benefits, then we talk about also the, the, uh, the incident cost, gasoline, vehicle related stuff. So it's almost a, a turnkey project and I want to thank Valley Baptist, assuming this, this passes, uh, Valley Baptist for their support because without them, you know, we couldn't have done this and Robert would still be struggling. So Robert, I open the door for you and tell us what's going on. Okay. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Um, we met with Valley Baptist, uh, Manny Vela, in, in our legal department, and this started back in a uh, lunch meeting with County Judge uh, Cascos, and I'd like to thank him for his um, help on this. Um, we mentioned it to him one time, and he was able to set up meetings with us, contact legal, and uh, had a meeting with Valley Baptist, and he pushed it very hard, and I really do want to appreciate the judge for all his help on it. But basically, um, um, the hospital wants to fund two officers, and. Um, they'll be on call from, well, they'll be working from 9 to 5, and the other will overlap from 3 to 11. And they're going to do, be doing uh, all the mental transports for Valley Baptist. Now, the question has arised about the other hospitals, and the priority will be Valley Baptist, you know, and, and when we finish their work, then we can do the other, the other hospitals. But our priority will be Valley Baptist, and these two officers will do nothing but, but uh, do a mental transports. And uh, I believe maybe once or twice a month will be a, a transport to San Antonio that we'll have to make. Other than that, it'll be just basically from here to Edinburgh and back. So when they're not doing mental health transport, like if they're, I mean, where, where, where will they be housed? Um, the, if, if commissioners approve it, uh, they will be um, housed out of my, my department. Because okay, you're going to basically be supervising yes, sir. this I, section, which yeah. I think is a great idea. If you allow it, I, I, I like to run the department, uh, th that program. And uh, when they're not doing mental transport, they will be stationed at our, and my idea was to, if they have a slow day, it was to concentrate on actually uh, what they were doing before, the warrants. Right. The traffic warrants out of the JP office. Good idea. So if they need them in Browns or wherever they need them, and they have a slow day, they can still respond to Valley Baptist from whatever location they're at. Because they're, they're just, they're, they're serving, basically. Yes. Yeah. And we'll, we'll generate a report on the mental, I mean, on the warrants and the mentals to the commissioner's court. Well, so, I, I know that you've, struggled with this for for quite some time i tell you what, you, you have a you might want to mention the con well yeah you know what mention the constables that were participating <laughs> yeah. because uh you, you have to applaud the ones that, that were willing to yeah. to to participate in the process but it just wasn't enough and we were really taxing you guys yeah. you know a lot so you don't want to give credit where credit is due so it is Mercedes, Horacio, Samora, all, all them us four really pushed it hard you four but, but a lot there's a couple of that we struggled with but you know we're all on the same team <laughs> Somewhere on the bench, but it's okay. Well, Robert, I Some of I feel, but we're there. I congratulate you for taking the lead on this, and I know that, that it's been hard. Uh, I'm glad to see that the warrant officers, and I will certainly make a motion in a minute, uh, because they're good people, they've done a good job, and, and I think that uh, you will be coordinating with, uh, to keep them uh, assigned to whenever they're not doing the transports. You'll yes, when, when, like I said, when they have a slow day, we'll just uh -huh. assign them to the, the traffic warrant okay. division. Robert, I also appreciate you stepping up and taking <coughs> on this added burden, uh, but it is something that's desperately needed. My understanding is that not only just this, and, and I know we're talking about transporting, but that also includes the issue of taking the paperwork to JPs and judges for signatures, getting yes. it back to the hospitals so that the transport can take place. and. And obviously, they've got training that can be done because uh, they're going to need to be trained, as, as you well know. I think you've already been trained in it. But, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I've been trained. Uh, Valley Baptist has. Valley uh, Baptist is doing. They will be train, training training those two officers, and the officers will be a liaison between the hospital and the JPs, okay. take the paperwork back and forth, and when the law allows it, we'll do a section 26 at that moment. Very good. Appreciate it. Motion for approval. It's another good partnership. Yes, yes okay. definitely. Thank you, Valley Baptist. Can I ask you a question? You said yes, that uh, Valley Baptist is going to be uh, paying for the gas and all that. We're going to be providing the vehicle? Just the vehicle, and they'll pay the, the fuel and uh, the salaries, the fringe benefits. It's the same vehicles that they had. The only thing I added, um, I, I talked to David, was to see if they could provide uh, a cell phone. I talked to Rosie Cavazos today. She's going to check with Manny Vela, see, 
Just so they could, like on weekends and stuff like that, when they'll right. be on call, so they can have communication straight to the officer. Valley Baptist should be able to provide a couple no. of cell phones. Yeah. You gotta squeeze them. Yes. <laughs> That's great. All right. Thank, Thank you, Robert. Thank you all. Thank Appreciate you all. That was a move by Commissioner Tamayo. Do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Wood, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Thank, Thank you, you, Robert. Thank you, Judge. You, you can make your meeting. Thank you. Item O, consideration approval of new independent procedures. Mike Forbes. Mike, I read them, but I just want you to explain briefly to the court what, what you're doing and why you're doing it. Okay. Uh, every three or four months, and I try not to bombard the court with too many procedures at one time, but as I find procedures out there that help to uh, fine tune and make improvements overall countywide to, uh, to, to tighten operations, to get better control, over uh, different areas and aspects of procurement. Uh, as I find these, I'm batching them, running them by uh, the county administrator, the auditor, and legal. Uh, we look at them carefully, scrutinize them. Some of these are ideas coming from other counties, but it, it, it's an effort to try and just tighten up our operations and be sure that everyone out there doing or conducting different aspects of procurement understand what the county's rules and procedures are, and, and you'll see more coming as, 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 as we continue on with this project, but it's a never-ending project. There's always room for improvement, and these procedures allow us to address issues that have not been addressed in the past. Outline some of the procedures more specifically. For example, purchases from employees, this procedure basically identifies what the county's policy recommended to the court for approval would be, which, for example, in this one, it says that it shall be the policy of the county not to purchase any goods or services from an employee without prior consent of commissioner's court. Return for credit basically lays out in a one-page policy all the steps involved in what the department should do when they're looking to return items for whatever reason, maybe they've purchased too many items and don't need that many, but need to return a few back to the vendor. This lays out the procedures to what steps they should follow when returning items back for credit. Returnable materials, basically the same. Returnable materials, we're looking at uh, items that need to be returned for what other purposes, to provide a procedure for returning materials to suppliers and how they should actually uh, make that effort. Rush purchases, we have that laid out. Sole source, this is basically letting departments know that if there's an attempt to, to make a sole source procurement that exceeds 15,000, that item has to be placed on the agenda and the court has to approve it before a purchase order can be issued. Mike, if you go back to the first one you talked about purchasing from employees, are you going to extend that out using that nepotism graph or whatever because right there you're only talking about em about employees but you're not addressing employees spouses or family members uh, how are you going to address that or are you going to go ahead and expand it right the, the, I have another procedure that follows okay. this which will be coming to the and court which is that. and will attach the nepotism charge that we use in all of our bids and proposals yeah. which okay. basically identifies immediate kin as well as other relationships. And that, that is a separate procedure, other, non-employee, uh, but family-related or nepotism-related type purchases. Now, the way you're gonna disseminate this is you're gonna, you're gonna email this policy to all department heads and, and, and or elected officials, obviously. Everybody, right? Exactly. What okay. we're doing with all these procedures, Commissioner, is they're all on our website, and we're sending emails. Like Once these get approved by tomorrow, or Monday, uh, we'll send an email to all the departments letting them know that these procedures have, are, are an updated Thanks. list approved by Commissioner's Court. They're on the website. The website link will be attached for, the, for everyone to see, and they should be familiar with these procedures. In addition, what we've done is we've fine-tuned our requisition so that when anyone <coughs> makes a request close to the signature, there's a comment that says, this request is in compliance with current county internal procedures. Mike, I'd like to take, I'd like if, you, if you, the court would agree to take it a step further. 
uh, as you send this, this information out, I think that you need to send some kind of an acknowledgement form. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that acknowledgement sure. for form should yeah. be, I have read the policies and I, you know, I mm -hmm. concur and they ship it back to you. Perfect. Uh, that way you've got it in your file and we need to get that from every single elected official, department head, anyone that does procurement. I don't know how far down the, the uh, you know, the peck and order you want to go. But you're going to have to make that call. But I want you to get something in writing back. I don't want somebody to say, well, I didn't know. I never saw it, never read it. I'm not familiar with it. So I want them to acknowledge that they're familiar with these new rules. And I think that okay. that should be a protocol okay. on every time you send out that you get some kind of written response back. Okay. Uh, if someone is not opening up their email box, then you mm -hmm. hand deliver it. Okay. Okay? For sure. That way you'll have the documentation. Right. What we could do is we have a book, a signature book for everyone approved to, to, to sign and request based on requisitions. We can add that to the book. I think we also have in there an ethics form that all, all employees involved in procurement have to sign. So we can add to that these as a separate section. Well, I think every time you send an addendum to a policy or something, I mean, you got, I would think that you'd want to have some kind of acknowledgement okay. from whoever is receiving it, okay. just so you know that, that your messages are not being unheard. Okay. Okay, but you did a good job. I read them and they were. Thank you. I was very impressed. They Thank were good. You, Lots of work put into it. Thanks. Okay. Thank your you. motion to approve. So moved. By Commissioner Tamayo. Do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Wood. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Item 4A. Budget amendments, line item transfers, and or salary schedules. Judge Commissioners, you should have received the uh, budget amendments and um, attached salary schedules as well. The uh, budget amendments are pretty um, pretty general. They're just uh, moving uh, current funds to meet current requirements that they're that they are needing. Um, on page one, there is an, there is a supplemental funding that was received on the White Sands Task Force, so you'll show an increase there of fifty five thousand dollars to, or rather, setting up the budget to acknowledge the fifty five thousand dollar award, which uh, was on an existing award document from the prior years. Um, and page two of the budget amendments and page three are um, just general budget amendments. On page three, you'll see $11,000 being moved from the Board of Children in the Juvenile Department, and that is being moved to contractual, and that is to um, uh, give the Juvenile Department to pay the, the fee for them to access the uh, software system that allows them to uh, uh, generate the savings on medical claims for the, for, the, uh, for the children that they have in their services. And the last one is setting up funding on, not setting up funding, but moving funds from the El Ranchito Park, uh, moving it out of contractual and moving 10,000 into professional services. Okay, you recommend to approve? I do. Uh, the attached salary schedules as well are just uh, salary schedules that had not been approved yet, so we're presenting them for approval as well. Okay. Do I hear a motion? So motion for approval. By Commissioner Tamayo, say by Commissioner Benavides. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Approval of county claims. I have uh, warrants number 226970 through 227316 for your approval. I also have paper related claims, which are warrants number 227320 through 227452, seven except for warrant number 227445, which needs to be voided. And I don't believe that is marked uh, as being void in your, in your documents. Uh, I also have warrants number 227453 through 227502 for your approval. And I am also uh, adding payments that are uh, done through uh, direct, um, direct uh, wire transfer. And those are three uh, wire transfers for $180,967.50. And those are for the uh, for our medical providers as well. I also have the payroll check register uh, check date October the 16th, and that total is for um, $1,590,232.42. There is a check number in there that is to be voided, which is uh, uh, check number 68193. That is to be voided, and uh, you should have in front of you 
uh, replacement check, and that check number is 394865, and that is issued for $728.78 for your approval. You recommend the approval? Yes. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. By Commissioner Benavides, do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Wood, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. Please note my abstention on the two affidavits that I provided. I item C, I have one that I'm providing. Please note Commissioner Tamayo's abstention on the affidavit that she's provided as well. Approval of minutes for September the 17th, 2009 special meeting and September the 17th, 2009 regular meeting. Uh, the court members had an opportunity to read the minutes. Are they ready for approval? Move to approve. Move by Commissioner Benavides and by Commissioner Tamayo. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item F, consideration and authorization of a public hearing to allow public input concerning the Cameron County Stormwater Management Plan or implementation procedures. Do I hear a motion to open public hearing? So moved. By Commissioner Tamayo, signed by Commissioner Wood. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Ernesto. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Judge and Commissioners. This is a public hearing, and it just gives opportunity uh, to the public uh, if they have any comments uh, in our stormwater plan. We're closing our second year, starting our third year, and so this is just uh, for the record. We have to do it once a year under our stormwater plan uh, management plan, and uh, it just gives opportunity for, for, for public comment. And so how does the public know what the plan is? Where do you, where no, it's, it's in the website. It's uh, on the we website. put it on the website. It's in the county website. So if they look at it, they, they're familiar with it, they don't, they don't. Do you have any hard copies available? Uh, we do have hard copies. There should be here one in the administrative office um, of the stormwater plan. Is that what you're saying? The yes. Stormwater plan? yes. It's one available here, our notice of intent and application and that sort of thing. Okay. But if somebody wants copies, we have them available. But it should, it's posted in the website. If you go to Cameron County Transportation Department, under the engineering division, in, uh, it has uh, some bullet points in there where you can click on to the to the stormwater plan and some other. That's assuming stuff. people can log on to. Yes, it's available. Yeah, so many and, people uh, can log on to our website. <laughs> uh, it's it's available. Okay, this is this is a public hearing. Is anybody present here that would like to make comment on the plan? Now is the time to do it. If not. Uh, Recommend that we close the hearing, public hearing. Not okay, do I hear a motion to close public hearing? Did you make a move? Yes. Okay, by, by Commissioner Woods and by Commissioner Tamayo. To close public hearing, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. Discussion, item G, discussion of possible action on the results from the Andy Bowie Park land use ad hoc committee. Judge, commissioners. <clears throat> Uh, at the beginning of the year, um, y'all had requested that we establish a, um, a committee, ad hoc committee, for um, to evaluate the use of, of Andy Bowie Park. Um, since then, we've had uh, several um, committee meetings and um, discussed several um, ideas. Um, and the um, committee members are here. Uh, we have three. Um, they would like to make a presentation to the court. Um, does the committee, um, who was the chair of the committee? I don't think we had. There was no chair? Who was the sofa? <laughs> yeah. uh, who's going to make the recommend? Who's going who's to speak? To, uh, all, everybody or just? Okay. All right, just in case you had a spokesperson. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Judge, uh, Commissioners. First of all, we want to thank you all for having the foresight uh, to appoint an ad hoc committee to, to take a look at, at Andy Bowie Park. Uh, we, we certainly have uh, taken that task to heart. Uh, we believe very strongly that uh, geographically it may lie in Commissioner Benavides's uh, backyard, uh, but it truly is a treasure uh, not only of our county, uh, and, but certainly of our state and, and quite frankly of our nation because we have people from throughout uh, the country and from throughout other places in the world that come to, down here to visit us. Uh, our focus has been on Andy Bowie Park 
And, and let me just uh, applaud you, first of all, because we've been, we've been watching and listening to you uh, this afternoon. Uh, anybody that thinks that all the county commissioner's court does is bridges and roads uh, needs to come or needs to listen uh, to your televised program because we certainly know that there is a wide variety of, of programs that you uh, not only institute but that you coordinate with other governmental entities. Uh, and that's certainly to the benefits of all the citizens of our county. We are focusing on one of the true treasures of Texas, and that's Andy Bowie Park. Uh, our job has been to look, uh, to study, to evaluate, uh, to talk to various stakeholders uh, of Andy Bowie Park, not only residents, but people who come in and visit there. Uh, I think that you'll find uh, with our very short presentation, because we're not going to give you any solutions. We're not going to tell you what it is that we believe should actually be done at this point. We actually are going to ask you to partner uh, with us and with the citizens of Cameron County uh, because we believe that Andy Bowie Park is certainly a treasure that we need not only to, to preserve but certainly to, to protect and to defend as we go not only into the next decade but for our children and for our grandchildren. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, our, my other committee Mary, uh, member, uh, Mary Helen Flores. I also have Rob Nixon, who's, who's an, a committee member. I want to also uh, note that um, Mary Wood Ferguson was a very active participant in this committee. Unfortunately, she had to resign because she works with a law firm uh, that apparently is, is, may end up having a conflict that she just found out um, that was just uh, arose this, this past week. Um, but also uh, on our committee has been uh, Glenn uh, McKinley uh, from the island as well. So, Mary Helen. Hi. Thank you for your time. My portion of this presentation is uh, letting you know what parameters we came up with and uh, what resources we used. The parameters for public hearings, of course, are description of Andy Boy Park land, which you have a photo of in front of you. The park is a total of 20, 225 acres. 72 acres constitute the South Flats on the Bay Side. 42 acres, there are 42 acres of completed or pending high impact development in existence. That leaves us 111 acres for public beach park use. The uh, list of parameters that we have is uh, uh, the uses for existing public parkland should, number one, maximize public access, number two, be of minimal environmental impact, number three, maximize care and protection of the natural dune line, number four, highlight recreational and educational uses, number five, involve litter control strategies. The ultimate design and use should be of high quality and well administered and maintained. We want to be proud of the condition in which we keep our county beach parks. Resources for this committee's recommendations are, among the resources are, the existing deeds of our county beach park land, which specify that the land is to be used for public park purposes, the Texas Open Beaches Act, and the Coastal Barrier Improvement Act of 1990. Andy Bay Park falls under the category of an otherwise protected area in the Coastal Barrier Improvement Act. And as such, any development built on this land is prohibited from receiving federal flood insurance. Another consideration that we've taken into account in choosing the parameters listed above is the possibility of a second causeway from the mainland to the island and the heavy development that will occur on the north end of South Padre. The scheduling and locations for the recommended three public hearings are evening and or weekend times, a date which will allow for the input of our winter Texans, and locations which will draw a large number of participants. Thank you. How's it going? Thank you guys, by the way, for the opportunity to do this. Um, we don't have any solutions to present to you guys tonight. Uh, we want to move forward with the public hearing if I decide to do that to, uh, tonight. 
Um, we do have a basis of four ideas we came up with um, to start with to act as like a foundation uh, to run the public hearings on for the public to expand upon if they'd like to. Um, one is a nature trail made up of uh, raised boardwalks that would uh, allow visitors such as birders, hikers, and generally curious people to roam the large dunes within the park without disturbing the valuable vegetated dunes that would protect uh, development and the road to the west. Um, a for-profit tent camping area that would provide for a safe and enjoyable area for visitors to be able to camp overnight. Um, a dedicated launch and landing area within the South Flats for sail and kite boarders as well as sail sailboats to utilize. A for-profit fishing pier on the Laguna Madre side to enhance fishing opportunities for the area and allow for the establishment of small vending kiosks that would cater to these new attractions and the general public. Um, we wanted to come up with a list that would keep the natural aesthetic but still give the county opportunity to make money off the land. Would you repeat the, the fourth, the third one? Sure. Uh, dedicated launch and landing area within the South Flats for sail uh, and kite borders as well as sailboats. Um, they already use it for that right now, but we'd like to keep it protective form in the future. So, um, but with that, um, tonight we're just asking for your for your guys' approval to move forward with the public hearings and your participation as well. So, yeah. Thank you, Ruben, Rob, and Mary Helen. Mr. Nixon. Uh, yes, ma'am. The last one. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the last one? The uh, the last uh, use. Yeah, here uh, it was up here. Allowing the establishing uh, small vending kiosks to cater to the, those new attractions. These are, are possibilities that, that have arisen because of the current uses that are, are being out there and what uh, uh, stakeholders in, in these different areas. We, we've attended one of the Cameron County Parks uh, meetings and they're very interested in, in making sure that there's a as, as you are, I mean, when, when you're talking about the drainage plan that we're talking, I mean, I think that's very important for us to, to look at this in a, in a larger scheme and make sure that not only the commissioner's court, but, you know, all those different kinds of, of uh, bodies that have a voice in the development of the park uh, come to the table. And that's why we think it's really important that we have public meetings um, and and, and uh, we, we did have a, a meeting with, with Judge in which we asked legal about the possibility of having joint meeting with the Commissioner's Court and perhaps uh, City Commission and the Parks Board and, and, and different ones as a, a kickoff on the island uh, to be able to, to gather some momentum for, for this input. And uh, apparently that, there's not a problem with the Commissioner's Court meeting somewhere else other than in Brownsville. So uh, that won't be an impediment, but I think it's incredibly important uh, for us to get input from the public uh, to be able to hear, and, and because we, we all have ideas, uh, but I think we need to step back and listen to what the various people who actually go out there and use it, and I, I, I truly believe that each of you have gone out there uh, but when you go out there and, and you just kind of walk the, the property of, of Andy Bowie Park, you, you get the sense of, of the pristine nature that it is and the beauty that it holds and why it really attracts as many people as it does and why we're able to, to increase, uh, hopefully, uh, unlike our bridges, increase our, our, our admission uh, to these parks. Uh, and to be able to generate the kinds of revenues that we need uh, to be able to provide the services, not only that Andy Bowie and Isla Blanca uh, Park provide, but that we provide for all the other parks in our county as well. Ruben, as you know, when we started this whole process, and I wanna thank all three and the rest of the county, Mary Wood also for, for serving on this committee. And I think the purpose of forming this committee was to avoid the the debacle of that that uh, this court had experienced. That, you know, I'll bring of, that up. I'll bring it up because it, I think it was it was critical. But what it what what that what that issue happened to do was was kind of you know it woke a sleeping giant so to speak. Uh, and the purpose of this committee was not only for this commission to to convey the message to to the public and to you all that it is different. It's transparent. And we wanted you involved from the very beginning. I think what I told all of y'all, whatever the committee recommends, that's what I'm going to support. Unless it's something like 
you know, way, way wild. Um, and, but, but I think we need to. We're too old to be wild. Yeah. <laughs> but we do need to partner, and I think that's one, one of the, one of the, the, uh, uh, the issues that, that we've been supporting for the last couple of years is, is you know, openness and, and working with partners and getting you all involved and, uh, and assist you with this. Not that we're going to do, I mean, we don't have to do what you suggest. I'm just, I'm just saying that I, as one, would, would take the committee's recommendation, you know, at the way what I would support. Or else why even have you all waste your time? And, 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 that, and actually, that was one of the, of, the, of the things that, as a committee, we felt that we were too small uh, to, right. to, to really reflect uh, a larger uh, a position that may be out there. And that's why we think it's important. That not only us uh, that are your ad hoc committee, but that you as the commissioners and commissioners court uh, have the opportunity to listen to people that, that, that do have uh, and, and who are very passionate about. So, so you're referring to a public hearing? Yes. But, but I think this is a good beginning. I think that at the public it's, it, hearing, uh, <clears throat> this will, will start the discussion. I mean, you've got some ideas which I appreciate. Precisely. And, and, that's, and that, I always feel that if somebody uh, comes to us with a problem because this had been a problem in the past that you have a solution and I know at the very beginning you said we don't have the answers well to me you've done a pretty good job of coming up with some answers uh, that can help us you know I, I think we have some direction some direction exactly yeah. and, and I think that will facilitate the public hearing and and, and before I, I, I leave I, I really want to thank uh, Javier for providing uh, guidance and uh, a place to meet and, and kind of uh, uh, giving us an orientation as to the parameters of the park and, and where it is and, and how it lies and what part really is under development, which isn't, and what really c continues to be a public access to, uh, to the citizens of, of, of our county. The one thing that I don't want to go unnoticed, and I also want to thank Javier for doing that, but I think one of you, maybe it was Rob or Mary Helen, one of you brought the issue up about, you know, when are the meetings, when, you know, what's going on. So we decided to, you know, post all these meetings on our website when they're going to occur so that not only you all know, but the public knows. And, and I think, I'm, I'm hoping that that is a, a, a positive move uh, in making everyone aware because even your meetings should not be closed. They should be open to everyone, anyone that wants to attend and participate. Uh, the public hearings, you know, I would like for you to, to work with, with Javier uh, in, in terms of setting them up. Now, we need to know ahead of time because the way that we can meet outside of the, of the county seat is by posting it on, on our meeting and saying our next meeting will be at, you know, wherever. Well, I, I think from the input that we were getting, and uh, incidentally, I, I attended one of the meetings of the South, uh, what is it, South Padre property owners uh, meeting uh, last week, um, and and they have a, a, a great deal of passion about uh, about Andy Bowie Park as well. So you, you've got a lot of enthusiasm building up right now, uh, and, and it'd be a good thing. But I, I think the other stakeholders that are not going to be here until December or January will be Maybe some of our, our senior citizens and our, mm -hmm. our winter visitors who, quite frankly, pay, um, and I was not aware of this, I mean, we, we charge a, a, a a nice fee to put uh, your RV vehicles on uh, on Isla Blanca, uh, and unbeknownst to me, uh, it's actually less than some of the other parks actually charge. So mm -hmm. those are things that we're, we're we're starting to find out, and I, and I think it's in, it's important for us to be informed as well. Uh, but I think that uh, in working with Javier, I think we 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 want to make sure that we plan our initial meeting, which we believe will be in, on South Padre Island to be able to afford the maximum amount of opportunity for people to, to participate. I think we would probably have one here and perhaps one in San Benito uh, at, at, uh, at our county complex in, in San Benito, which would be able to draw people from La Feria, Santa Rosa. So you, you all can, can decide how many public hearings you want to have. You want to have as many as you want. I mean, no, we don't. <laughs> well, I want you to understand what it's like. But, but I think it's important. I, I think that the it just you know you all work it out when you want. If you want to wait till December or January, that's fine. Uh, there's really no fast 
timetable here. I think we need to just take our time and, and well, make sure we're in October, provide. Judge. I mean, we're almost exactly. the end of October. So it's not that far away. It, it's going to be on us pretty quickly, and I think January, sometime in the uh, mid-January area. You don't work it out. You don't work it out and just work with, with Javier and then make sure, Javier, when, when you come up with the date, for the public hearing that, that you check with, with all members of the court, make sure that they're going to be available for, for that day. Uh, once we get that consensus, then what you can do is place that item on the agenda so we can approve it to meet it that following day. And I'm assuming at that point, you can formally extend the invitation to uh, the city of South Padre and uh, everybody else that, that needs to be the PI and everybody else. Okay. Excellent. Very Thank good. you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Thank it. you, Commissioners. Ruben, I think we all appreciate yeah. the work you all have done uh, and certainly the presentations this evening. Do you have these presentation material in some format that we can access, either written or electronic? We, or we, verbatum, we, not? Yeah. We, it's on the record. Okay, it's verbatim. Yeah, okay. We did. Okay. I'd like to yes. take a All right. Thank Good you. Information. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. By Commissioner Tamayo, signed by Commissioner Benavides. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item H, consideration of possible action on a beachfront construction certificate and dune protection permit for Larry Mark Polsky for the development of Sea Breeze Estates. I mean, is this what ready? Is this something that do we need to wait for GLO or something? Yes, but um, the um, chairman from the uh, Dirt Protection Committee sent out an email. Do you want to table it? Okay, no. that's what I thought. Do I hear a motion to table? table? By Commissioner Tamayo, do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Wood, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. Aye. Item I. Consideration of possible action regarding reimbursements from FEMA. Robert? Judge Commissioners? Please. I will tell you, Mr. Colley is going to be here on the 10th. Uh, uh, and we're going to visit with him at that moment. He's coming on, on some other stuff. It's going to be great for Cameron County. Uh, but I want to mention this to him as well. Absolutely. The, I, fact, the fact that we haven't gotten the work. additional. We are still waiting for, for some audits to, to take place. So we're in the same place we were last week. Correct. Basically. Yeah. Okay. And I've, uh, since, since the last time I met with the RLO and a member of the uh, GDEM audit staff and the recovery staff, We've actually taken the opportunity to call our neighboring county and different cities uh, between you know here us and them and unfortunately everybody is in the same position so i think okay a visit with mr collie would be definitely needed well he'll be here on the 10th on the and tent. then um you'll just be here for a little bit but i'm going to try to we're going to string him down for a little bit and just sure. try to 10th Excellent. of november november 10th yes well, he's not coming for a, for a formal meeting. He's coming to talk about some well, other that's stuff. What I mean. Yeah, but I'm going to. That's when you'll be able to. I'm going to bring some some stuff up to him. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge Robert's blistering so report? So by <laughs> Commissioner Tamayo, and by Commissioner Wood. All in favor, so that by saying aye. Aye. And the opposed item carries. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. By so Commissioner so Benavides, second by Commissioner Tamayo. All in favor, so that by saying aye. 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 And the opposed item carries. God save this honorable court. <laughs>